Hello and welcome back to another amazing episode of Sports Talk with Dad. Lots to talk about today. The NFL draft obviously just happened. Uh, Aaron Rodgers in a Jets uniform, which is so sad. painful, including craziness going on in Major League Baseball. But before we get into any of that, as always, my name is Kyle, and I cannot call this sports talk with Dad without the man sitting next to me, a man who got his first date from a newspaper article, my dad, Tim. Got my first date from a newspaper Classified article? ads. Yeah, no, I didn't. I never used the newspaper for that. No. Did you know? No. You know the Pina Colada song, Scape, yeah. by Rupert Holmes? Know it well. That is a depressing as hell song. It was one of the top hits of 79, I believe. It's just proof people, you, you talk about lyrics, you always say lyrics were better back in the day. Well, it's a depressing You clearly lyrics. didn't listen to the lyrics back then either. That is a very sad song oh. with a deceivingly upbeat no they come back together and they realize oh no. we do have a lot in common it's don't messed we? up for those of you that have never actually listened to the lyrics of escape also known as the pina colada song the do you like pina coladas i apologize for the singing there it'd be better than if i would have tried to sing that <laughs> but it is it is sad you need to go back and listen to the lyrics it is about two people literally laying in bed next to each other feeding on each other filling out classified ads to go and meet another person and escape the relationship what? that they're in they meet each other only to realize that they were talking to each other the whole time when they actually meet in the bar they're going to awkward and they laughed about it. Yes. I'm like, I don't think that's the actual reaction that would happen in that situation. It might, it might be if they both realized, look, I didn't realize we were in this spot, but we came back together. And it's like, oh, you really want to get caught in the rain? You know, it's a better way to handle it. Just talk to your spouse <laughs> and and say, hey, we're having problems here. Yeah. But it was a huge hit. And nobody know. People just know the do you like pina coladas version? And the chorus, not really understanding, oh, this is somebody writing something to, to escape their relationship. Dwight Messed up it. song. So do you know what the number one song from 1979 was? 100%. You actually probably do. I probably know the song. You know I the, don't know. One hit wonder. Everybody said, this is going to be the next Beatles. My Sharona by the Knack. Ah. Every, song at every wedding. Every and by every cover band until probably recently. Oh, it'll come back. I mean, it's a, it's one of those American bandstand songs. Got a great beat and it's easy to dance to. They did nothing. They had one follow-up song, which was kind of a minor, minor, minor hit. Yeah. But after that, they were gone. But they will live forever because of that. It song. only takes one hit, man. I'd rather be a one-hit wonder than a no-hit wonder. There are a lot of those, too. Well, I mean, you know, another song that, that's made a comeback now is Mainskin, Beggin, which was it's the number one song right now in America, or at least was as of a week ago. I don't really pay close attention. But it is originally from Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. Well, which song? The I'm Beggin, Beggin You. Oh, don't. You made me sing. You made me sing. I'm wondering when the rodeo song is going to make a comeback. It won't. We're that's, not singing that's that. At, one. That's at every Wisconsin wedding ever. That was sung. That was probably the first song that I learned. And that's a depressing thing to say. Between <laughs> you and my uncle's bad influence. We were that. Your mom liked that <laughs> song too, in all my defense well, she was also a bad yeah, influence. she was like she was she i mean was if you go back to you two i never stood a damn chance <laughs> like the fact that i'm still here in, in the situation i am is just a miracle in and of itself i will the one time we had a disagreement well there were several times we had a disagreement but the one time when you were actually in a sporting event yes and we had a disagreement and i won this one and i think i was right was when you were playing basketball Somebody cut your legs out from under you and came yeah, down. when I got knocked out you cold. You got knocked out cold, but only for a second. Only yeah. for a second. I was right back. You did dent the floor. I did, with my head. Yes. And your mom was ready to get up and run down there, and I stopped her. And I said, he's got a coach yep. for a reason. Let them handle it. Thank Don't God. embarrass him. 
And she sat there, not too happy with me, but hey, it was the right thing to do. Well, and how times have changed, I don't remember going back in, but I know I went back into the game at some point. You did? <laughs> yeah. You had one of those concussions I used to get where it's like, I played in that game? Yeah. And, and from all I remember is from the stands, I got fouled and had to shoot a free throw. And I hear from you in the stands, aim for the one in the middle. Well, I knew you had a concussion. But it's hard as you. It hit. was the best advice. Yes, it was. I was seeing five of them. <laughs> and you made the shot. Did I? I don't even you, remember. You made I just shot. remember you going, aim for the one in the middle. And it worked out. It worked. But another sport I love to play where I also got a concussion from baseball. Listen, MLB officially stands for Major League Bummer because this is getting to be absolutely ridiculous. We talking about baseball. the Atlanta Braves? We're talking Atlanta Braves. We're talking the Rays. We're talking what's happening in Oakland right now. I mean, but especially when it comes to the Braves. So for those of you that don't know, you'll see a picture here on the screen in just a second, but Major League Baseball used to be a lot of fun. It was a bunch of characters in a clubhouse it was excitement. It was greatness. The Atlanta Braves have been in a hot streak. They have the second most home runs in the league. And what was great about it is a local shop gave them this over, two players that they met, an oversized Braves hat. It's just one of the big old Braves hats that you see. Uh, and they started to wear it in the clubhouse anytime anybody would hit a home run. It's a great tradition. Now, the sponsor who makes the hat, New Era, complained because it wasn't one of their hats and so rob manfred rather than doing what he was supposed to do you tell new era to get over it right this is this is just a, a home run thing we're not breaking your contract everybody's still wearing new era hats they're just wearing this to hit home runs he instead bends to the sponsorship and tells the braves they can no longer wear this hat but i'm wondering because milwaukee was doing that with cheeseheads earlier this year. I don't know if they've been told they can't do it either. The Nationals are doing it with wigs right now, powdered wigs right now. It's which is it's great fun that they should be allowing to do. It's I'm ridiculous. with you. I don't know what is happening in Major League Baseball. The fact that you're not breaking a contract, they're they're not doing anything but wearing an oversized hat as a home run celebration. And then your sponsor complains, which whatever sponsors are going to complain. Rob Manfred's answer should have been then make one for them that they can wear or shut up. I go with shut up. They're helping a local business. It's not hurting you even a little bit. It's not done with it. This, this is what's great about baseball. Fans got involved and they brought something into the clubhouse that fans gave them and made it a part of their celebration. And clearly I've been working for second place in home runs. Right. And by the way, if New Era really wants to continue to piss and moan about it, they fine. You're out of your contract. We're going to find somebody else to make us our hats. Correct. Guess what? New Era shuts up right then. They do. We'll buy out of the contract. Don't worry. We'll, yeah. we'll find somebody else to sell these hats. Correct. Matter of fact, we'll go to that store in Atlanta and see if they have the capability of doing it. Done. It's over with. Done. I, it's been that way with New Era from the word go. And... It's just getting to be ridiculous. New Era had teams take old hats off the shelves immediately, which happens, but they went overboard with it. It's like, dude. Shame on New Era. This is just a bad look for them. They should be. I won't buy a New Era hat. Just won't do it. I got my old Cubs hat. I've got my sports talk with that hat. Boom. That's we the go. way to go. Well, and then now we also hear Oakland finally gets a chance to move. As they should. They agreed. We were right. One of them was going to Vegas. I think the Oakland A's are a great fit. Perfect. Uh, fit. Especially being the A's. They're going to fit with Las Vegas very, very well. How does Las Vegas A's fit naturally? Aces. They're not the Aces. They're the A's. It's one of the historic it is. ancient franchises. I'm just saying it makes sense in my brain. At least they won't change the name. They won't. They'll still be athletics, still have the elephant for the logo, 
which Alabama and and oh, oh, well soon to be Vegas athletics. I don't understand why. There's a story that the actual, elephant is the there. Elephant goes back to the Philadelphia A's. Yes, for some it's reason. been there for I the don't know why. Time. I don't know why it is. I don't know either. But they are finally moving to Vegas. But then all of a sudden they need five hundred million in public wow. money that hasn't been approved yet. It'll happen. It will. It was just like, of course, that happened to Oakland. Of course. But that means Oakland has no more professional team. That's it. What are the last ones of the major sports? There are other smaller, I guess, quote unquote, professional sports. But of the big sports, they used to have the Raiders. They're gone to Vegas. They used to have the Warriors. They went to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They used to have, or still do for now, the A's. And they're out of there. They've got a terrible facility. And the fan, the people of El- Oakland refuse to come up with some of the money. Is Not that all of it? Because you need to explain this to me because I've always known Oakland as a joke, right? Throughout my fandom, the Raiders, where they played, it was a terrible stadium. They the A's the were same. always made fun of in the small market team and money ball and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Warriors were never anything in Oakland and moved as soon as they were able to. So yet when you were younger, it Oakland is. was a hot spot. When I was. Growing up, the Oakland A's were the best team. They went to back to back to back World Series. I think they actually won them. You know, it was the it was the era of Charlie Finley who owned the team, and I think that's the key to this is the ownership. Okay, uh, Charlie Finley, and it was a different time. You know, free agency was just creeping in. Sure, but he had Reggie Jackson, Sal Bando, Joe Rudy, Gene Tennis, on and on and on from that team. It was outstanding. Bert Campanaris was on that team. I said Reggie. Yeah. They were talking about a fun team. They had different uniforms for almost every day of the week. The green and gold, they all did. They were the Ducks before the Ducks. They were the Ducks before the Ducks. They were a fun team to watch. Now, I was a big red machine Cincinnati Red fan during that time because of Johnny Bench. Yeah. But they were in the World Series. They were fun to watch. The stadium didn't age well. They have such huge foul territory. They, yeah. You could catch almost everything. Right. The Raiders played in that same facility right. because it was no a multi-use. Recently. Yeah, it was a multi-use facility. It's just bad. And it outgrew its usefulness. And the team wasn't willing to step up and put any of their own money in. They just wanted Oakland to build it. And Oakland said, look, we can't. We don't financially can't do it. So let me let me ask you this then. Because obviously it was very different when you were a kid, right? We're seeing now and now in today and it really started when i was a kid where teams are starting to own the stadium in fact it's, mm-hmm. it's almost preferred at this point if they can at all afford but, it but when you were growing up all that public. was never the case all public money they were all owned by the city I, I mean i know county stadium was around that's owned by the county miller park or sorry american family field technically still is right. owned by the county um you know, Wrigley had its own lore, but it's always it's owned by Chicago, right? Yep. But that's really been a shift now. Do you think that that is hurting these cities more than anything? Because really, if you're going to pay for your own stadium, look what happened to St. Louis, right? They they said they moved because St. Louis wouldn't cough up the money for a new stadium. They didn't even try. No, they, that new stadium was built by the before he moved the concept sure. was before he bought the team i should say the concept was there the rams were moving no matter what done deal but with everybody leaving oakland i mean the stadiums are getting more expensive too do you think that has something to do with it or sure. what's the reason people are leaving to build well i think it's the economics of the various cities that you're looking at look at jerry jones he owns his stadium he, he makes all the revenue from it same with the guy from the, who owns the rams Chargers, I don't understand because they don't own anything. No, they want San Diego there. to pay for it, and San Diego won't cough up the money for it. But when I was a kid, it was always you had to build these, like in Milwaukee specifically. If Milwaukee didn't build this stadium, right, they were going to be Dubuque. Right. Yeah, you know, there's sure. nothing going on in Milwaukee other than the Brewers and the Bucks and the Packers played there for a right. time. Would have been a little bit different because you actually have a waterway in Milwaukee. Not that much. I, it, Milwaukee is a old historic uh blue collar town. town yeah yeah and it's it was dying the argument was we've got to build this so that we can be that have that image of we're a major league city that meant a lot yeah now 
Because Listen, County was built for the Braves. They were built to get the Braves from Boston. And it was a... I love County Stadium. And that was in what? The 30s or 40s? No, that was in 1951-52. Oh, it's, so the Braves were not in Milwaukee long. No, they were only there from like 53 to 65. And then wow. that, that stadium stood empty for until five years until the Braves... Or until the Brewers came yep. from Seattle. And... We always argue about Bud Seeley, but Milwaukee should be forever grateful to Bud Seeley for getting the Brewers back here. I there agree, was, and then Major was, League Baseball should curse his name for destroying the sport. But There was a time when the Chicago White Sox almost moved to Milwaukee because Comiskey Park at that point was going downhill. The Illinois State Legislature stepped in at the last minute before they moved to St. Petersburg, right? and they built what is one of the last of the utilitarian ballparks really bad. i do not like we're gonna get into the rays anywhere. in a minute here so i think it depends on the community i mean if it's a, like st louis bush family would build it i think cities will provide infrastructure but it's going to be interesting what happens like in milwaukee in another 30 years when amfam has run its course i mean it already has but yes i see what you mean well at some point it's going to have to be rebuilt they yeah. can't even get 290 million dollars right now to refurbish it. So Which is surprising to me because Pfizer got a, just a check, right? When they built Pfizer, they just got the check and said, here, build it. When they were building at the time, which was Miller Park, American Family mm -hmm. Field now, again, just got a check. The sales tax went up half, a, a percent, less than half a percentage. Well, I don't even think it was counties. that. It was like three know. In, in Milwaukee County alone and it paid for it. And the, the Bucks, the, Pfizer is owned by the Wisconsin Development Corporation. Correct. Which is really the buck. It is. It was a corporation created by the Bucks to build the state. Yeah, and <laughs> and it's going to be interesting to see. The, uh, Ampam has to be refurbished. I think they're looking to the brewers to kick in something. And the brewers are like, we have to deal with the finances of baseball. And we've talked about that a lot. There are ways that it can be addressed. But if you want to, let's look at Minnesota. Yeah, Target Field. Uh, Target Field never should have been built without a retractable roof. I think people in Minnesota would argue that point. I, people in Minnesota really like Target Field. It's a beautiful stadium from what I've heard. It's a beautiful stadium. We're, we're going there probably not this summer, but next we're going. Yeah, and and I've been to the outside of it. I haven't been into a game yet, but it's a beautiful facility. However, this summer season in Minneapolis is so short that sure. the nice thing about American Family Field in Milwaukee is they can draw people from all over the state and guarantee a game will be played. Yeah, you won't be able to see the game because the sight lines are so bad. Not getting into that, there will be a game played. In Target Field, that's not the case. It's a lot of rain out. Same with Detroit, America Field. Um, Northern cities should have at least a retractable sure, Wrigley. Dome. Wrigley's a different deal. Wrigley is the greatest stadium for baseball ever built. I love Wrigley. <laughs> I do. I love Wrigley. Um, I love Wrigley too. Okay. It should have been rebuilt someplace else, and someday it will. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know what they're going to do now. Let's talk about another team that should be moving. Well, hold on. I have one more question okay. for you because this is really a generational top topic, and I do want to get into that because we are going to talk about the Rays. And let us know what you think about this rebuilding process in the comments below. And while you're down there, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we enjoy making it. Because you mentioned that it's a fight now, right? Mm -hmm to get this money people do not agree with stadiums as much right where when you were growing up it was pride to have those stadiums when you got the brewers into town even in the early or late 90s i should say when you're talking about getting the american family field built it was really like yes we're here for it this makes sense because like we said it's sales tax right to get pfizer built to get uh, american family field built it was raising sales tax from 5.5% to 5.8%. It was a drop in the bucket that nobody ever noticed, and it paid for it five years, and it was done. Yet now, teams are having to start to fight, and especially on the Oakland side of things. Oakland had no reason to lose the Raiders. Oakland had no reason to lose the A's, and they really had no reason to lose the Warriors. They just refused used to put in any type of public funding to they didn't even try 
to put in public funding, which they could have done sure. in the early 2000s when they started to beg for a new stadium. And Oakland refused to even have the conversation. They refused to even put it to a vote mm -hmm. to make that decision. If Because I think the people of Oakland probably would have voted yes to, to get these stadiums built. I don't know built. if they would have or not. I mean, the finances of baseball, don't forget when, when I was growing up and when these stadiums were being built, the average salaries of the players was $80,000. Sure. And granted, it was a lot more than the general public, but it's not as astronomical as it is today. Right. Uh, and there, there are a lot of people who actually will look and say, well, let those millionaire players and those billionaire owners pay for this. It's an argument that's somewhat realistic because as soon as if the fans build it out of public money. Right. They're essentially giving a billionaire a place where he can make more billions. And what's returned into the community? Prestige, money coming in when people come to watch the games. But it's, you know, is I don't think it's a fair trade off. And I think that's where things have changed. I don't think any community should pay 100% for any new stadium. It's got to be a part private public partnership at this point. And part of that public partnership partnership means all the infrastructure that goes along all the long-term maintenance should be a part of that you know the 290 million for, in the case of AmFam should be at least split or at least see something coming back uh, and so far we we really haven't seen that and Wisconsin is still fighting it it'll get done because the stadium has to be updated that roof right. has to be fixed so apparently so does my microphone. Yeah, your here, microphone. So I has apologize. It. But it's going to be it's it has been a huge change and it's a generational thing when I as you said when I was a kid pay for it. Right. We want these teams to come here. Oakland I think is an economically depressed area. California it's hard to do anything anymore. It is. Just to find the land to do it would have been going through all the environmental things and sure. and I don't think the teams I think the teams are at some point going yeah, we're not playing this game anymore. One thing that confuses me too is is the tax side of things. Like some of these people are looking for tax relief when it comes to garbage and and sure. everything like that. I think that adds to it too. Like I don't mind putting in public funding for the stadium, right? But don't don't ask me to cover your bills. No, for the I, next ever, however many years, and I don't think they should either. I mean, these stadiums are going. Look, what happened when at the time Miller Park opened up, they were drawing over 3 million fans and they did so for 10 years in a row it took a few years yeah. after it was built really after uh the current owner bought the team is when it, that started to change but they put a i think they, i'm good with the microphone they now. put a good team on the field it's been a competitive team off and on during their tenure of the or mark antonazio yeah and he to his credit has gone out and gotten players that under Seelig they never would have gotten you know, no because Seelig was trying to make the brewers he was uh, the Brewers. At, boy. Yeah, the Brewers at that point were the poster child for a small market team. Unfortunately, Major League Baseball has gotten so regionalized. If it was a national pastime again, which if anybody has watched our solution to Major League Baseball would make it a national game again, it would. It would actually help things. Just having like this weekend in Milwaukee, uh, Otani was in town. It, just a massive home run. Which was amazing, but it just—I thought it was going to hit the roof. It, it was just a rocket ship. But just having those teams come in is not how you nationalize a game. No, you have to nationalize it by making sure that somebody on the East Coast is interested in what's happening. Because well, the, the issue Coast. is too—I didn't even know the Angels were coming into town. It wasn't talked about on the radio. It wasn't talked about on billboards. It wasn't talked about nationally at all. Nobody knew the Angels were in town unless you really follow the Brewers. And I don't think, let's face it, the Brewers are not a national story. No. But Otani is. He is, but he's not. He's correct. Neither is Mike Trout. Two of the best players in all of baseball over the last 20, 15 years, 20 years. And nobody even hears about him. Right. That's just a travesty. Well, let's go over to the Rays now, because right. as you said, the Rays are looking for a new stadium, right? And that. Been. And by the way, for those who don't know, we lived in Tampa. We, I was there for almost 15 years. You were there for 10 plus. We love the Rays when we're down there, except they play in the biggest dump 
I didn't. I, I went there once and refused to go there ever again. I would go to four or five games a year just because I like the Rays, but nope. the stadium is a dump. It's in a bad part of town. It shouldn't be in St. Pete because you can't get back over the bridge. No, and they're talking about building it in St. Pete again. Then they're signing their own death wish. Which you can't do. Can't build that in St. Pete. I don't think the Rays ownership group will agree to that. Well, St. Pete is trying to push it, but St. Pete shouldn't be pushing it because people would rather go to the beach if you live in St. Pete. Correct. There's too many other things to do. I don't think people understand that that aren't from Florida, so if you don't, Tampa Bay has no beaches. Right. Well, because not Tampa Bay. It's just Tampa. It's Tampa. Tampa Bay is Tampa, St. Pete, Pete, Clearwater. Clearwater. That's a Tampa Bay area. Tampa Bay doesn't actually exist. It's a... It's, it's, it kind of does, but it's... You know, there's a bay there of some kind. Yeah, it's the, the city's just called Tampa. Um, but if you want, you live in Tampa and you want to go to a beach, you're going to St. Peter Clearwater. You're driving an hour over yes. a bridge in order to get to a beach. So if you're in St. Petersburg, you're in Clearwater, you're going to the beach. You're not going to a, a baseball game. You're not going to a nasty dome stadium. You're that definitely not going to a bad stadium. Oh. And, now, the question comes into play, and this is what interests me with this conversation more than anything. Because Tampa clearly doesn't want to keep the Rays. They clearly have no interest in truly keeping the Rays. Because if we're talking about a city that really wanted this team, there's plenty of places you could have built this stadium. There's plenty of land you could have gotten not far off the interstate, off of I-75. Just north of Tampa, there's a ton of land. Just south of Tampa, there's a ton of land where you can build this. Sure. You could look at building it by the fairgrounds, by, by the casino out there. There's a Hard Rock Casino where there's tons of land, and you're right off of two major interstates, an I-4 and I-75. And then our people in Orlando will consider coming over to the game because Correct. it's right there. Then you're talking an hour. Doing that alone, you're going to draw people in, but clearly they're not interested. And you look at places moving, you don't really hear anybody jumping for joy to get a baseball stadium anymore. San Antonio wants a football team. They Charlotte don't want a wants, baseball team. Charlotte is the one community that has stepped up and said, we want baseball. Salt Lake Nashville. City saying now they want yes. baseball. Nashville is, wants a major league team. Nashville would be a great Nashville, place. Though. Nashville would be a great place. So you have to change the name. What would you change it to? The Sounds something. All right, that was dumb. What, the Nashville Sounds? I think that's actually the name of their minor league team now. It's a dumb name. What's it's your mascot going to be? The music. I don't know. It's country music capital of the world. Call them the Dollywoods. I don't care. Call them the Stetsons. That's worse than sounds. Cowboy hat. I know what a Stetson is. It's actually a university in Florida called Stetson. It is. Great law school. But I think Nashville would be a great place for it. I think Charlotte would be a great place for it. But the number of communities is shrinking fast. You don't hear Buffalo anymore, which when I was growing up, Buffalo was begging for an MLB team. Yeah, but Buffalo can't support it. Not anymore. No, Nashville can. Charlotte certainly can. Again, it would have to be a dome stadium in Charlotte. Right. Or you, retractable. Salt Lake think, says they can. I don't know. I don't know enough about the yeah. geographic. I just learned that the Salt Lake is like three feet deep. Yeah, it's. I've been out there. It's and you can't deep. you can't swim in it. No, it's Salt Lake. Like, there's nothing alive in there nothing. at all. There's so much salt, saline, whatever. Right. It's, the flamingos go into it. That's about it. It's as dead as the Dead Sea. Which I didn't even know there were flamingos in Utah until recently. Or some sort of bird. I think it was flamingos. I don't know. My son talked about it. I have no idea. Anyways. Speaking maybe, of, did you know that flamingos have the legs they do because they get their food out of very acidic water? And that's why their legs look like that? Very tough. Thanks like for sharing. The acid. So the Rays, though, need to get out of St. Pete. It's a bad place. And if Tampa, I think Tampa wants to step up, but they still are fighting with St. Pete. And baseball needs to step in and go, okay, the lease is up in 2026. And I think the reason they're not saying a word is they're moving them. They're going to order them out of Tampa yeah, and, and be done with it. Tampa and Miami, honestly, could be contracted. With well, that's the issue, too. The Smokies, by the way is the team of the minor league team there. Not a bad name. It's a really good name. You have the Rockies, then you have the Smokies. Yeah. It's a natural rivalry, but you need the Cubs farm system to change the name. 
But I agree. They're talking about expanding Major There's League Baseball. no way baseball should ever, this, ever, this ever This is where expand. sports need to pay attention and not just be a money grab. You're diluting your talent. The NFL is talking about expanding. You're diluting your talent there. Like there's enough talent in the NFL for players out there, but you don't have enough quarterback talent no. by any means to make that happen. And you're just diluting it further and further. We see NFL players in Canadian football and even in the XFL, we're seeing NFL talent there. And it's not a good product. It's not a good product. And Major League Baseball, the problem is there may be a few hitters, but there's not nearly enough pitchers. No, no, especially with the amount of pitchers you have on a roster now. And starting pitching is a joke, which is another story well, we've talked about in the past. I'm not going into it today. They need to get away from just throw the ball hard and teaching people how to pitch again and making pitching a valued product again. Right. But even when you talk about when I was growing up, the pitching talent, when starters were actually starters, you had one ace on your team if you right. were lucky. So in the end, because I know we want to get into the NFL, I want the Rays to move because as much as I enjoyed living in Tampa, Tampa is not going to miss that team. No. Because their people are just going to go back to the beaches, back to the golf courses. It's 104 degrees in Tampa in the right. summertime. People want to be out and enjoy the sunshine and do the outdoor activities. That's why it's there. They're not going to go to, they don't go to St. Pete to go to a game. St. Pete, the trap already is closing off the upper half of it because nobody goes. Right. People barely go to Buccaneers games, and that's right off the interstate. The only time they go is when the Buccaneers win. It's the, big, the only team that Tampa supports unconditionally is the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. They are sold out every game, and it's the best product in Tampa. You know where that stadium is? Downtown Tampa. Right off the interstate. Yep. Amelie Arena. Easy between I-75 and I-4. Correct. Go figure. Easy on, easy off. And there was a proposal to build a stadium there. Eh. Well, they were stupid and made a proposal to build it in Ybor City, which is all historic. Correct. Or out in the Bay, which doesn't make a lot of sense because yeah, it's, it's going to get flooded immediately. It's not a matter of if, but when someday another hurricane hits Tampa head on. Well, Tampa's would, gone anyways. I would not want to be in that stadium. Like, what are we talking about? Tampa's going underwater if that <laughs> happens. It has no protection from hurricanes hitting directly. But it has the Native American protection over there. It does. And, and we saw it firsthand. Hey, I, I'm a believer at this point. What I'm not a believer in is the Green Bay Packers draft. Oh. So, but let us know what you think about the Rays moving. Let us know what you think about stadiums and communities paying for stadiums. You let us know in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we enjoy making it. The draft was an interesting interesting time yes it was i could not now for those of you who don't know haven't watched this show even once obviously we are packer fans here. we're we're national football league fans but we hold a special place in our hearts for the packers you got a guy you're coming up on your your pick you you traded up with the jets to get the 13th pick at 13 Christian Gonzalez, the number one rated quarterback in the draft, and the guy looks just like a stud. Yep. He's sitting there waiting to be drafted. Yep. There are, were a bunch of linemen top rated. At that point, I think... Um, Dalton Kincaid Dalton was there. Dalton Kincaid was there. Miles... The uh, Miles was, Garrett. Miles Garrett was still there. Or All Miles of, Murphy, I'm Miles sorry. Murphy. Miles Murphy. Thank you. Thank you. Miles Murphy was sitting there. All those players were there so the packers go out and draft somebody projected for a late second round pick he had been jumping up the draft boards quite a bit he hasn't started a game in iowa i i hope luke van Ness, he looks like a great kid i hope he's a stud i hope he's the next jj water clay matthews why would you draft that guy in that position when you have so many other needs, you're not giving me anything here. You're just shrugging your shoulders. On top of that... The good news is we know they treat Jordan Love the same as they treat Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Well, no, they may even treat him worse because instead of signing him to a fifth-year option... Oh, my God. The kid... 
And Jordan seems like a great guy. He's handled this whole Aaron Rodgers thing better than anybody could have. But the Packers convince him to sign a one-year extension. He gets $13 million guaranteed with a potential for $22.5. I'd like to see what the incentives are. I'm sure they're not going to be easy. But if, if I'm him, this is why nobody gives the Packers a cap-friendly deal. Right. Because they treat these people like crap. Well, listen, they drafted two tight ends later and won the second round and in the third round. Both have injuries. Two of the top-rated tight ends. But the reason they weren't rated as high is because they've been hurt they all of last season. They drafted a kicker. They drafted a kicker who has a 71% Completion. Completion rating? And, I don't and, think it's completion. And had, and had an ACL injury. Yeah. When you could have gotten, I mean, if they would have drafted the kid out of Michigan, I wouldn't have had a problem with that because that kid looks like a stud. They drafted a wide receiver who was thought to be a great return specialist, yet you just signed Nixon, signed Nixon, who's an amazing return special. guy. Uh, I, I don't get the draft at all. I really don't. You got Dalton Kincaid, who obviously in our mock draft was my draft pick. Correct. Uh, the second round, I mean, getting two tight ends great, getting two hurt tight ends. I mean, I hope it works out. The one guy, they, they got the kid from Iowa State who I think could be really good. I mean, he could. But I, it's just... Any, anybody can be good. Look, yeah. Let's be honest. We well, don't know what they are until they actually hit the NFL. And I, we're, we're going to talk about that. Here's the other team that really confused me in this draft. The Detroit Lions. I My pick for them was B. John Robinson. Who was there at six? He was there at six. They pass on him. Well, they traded back. So they traded back. So it, to 12. Right. And yet, what do they do? They draft his backfield mate. Why wouldn't you take the most dominant? I mean, if everything plays well, out, play we don't the know. Team. They're both from Texas. No. I thought they were both Texas players. No, Texas, Alabama. Gibbs from Alabama. Oh, okay. I bet. I thought, whatever. But B. John Robinson is sitting there, and he is the top running back, hands down, in the draft. He could have been the next Barry Sanders, Billy Sims, whatever. Everything is there for him. Yeah. I would have taken him there, and you could have gotten another pick later on. Well, you basically drafted DeAndre Swift's replacement, which showed sure. that by you trading him yep. later on in the draft. I mean, hey, the kid could be good to go with Montgomery. I, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It was definitely a reach. It's definitely a guy you could have gotten at 18. Correct. I mean, both picks the Lions had were reaches. Um, but I do have a lot of respect for the Detroit Lions at this point. For one reason. They, they did to Goff what the Packers needed to do to Rodgers, mm -hmm. which is the Lions made sure and called Jared Goff before they drafted Hendon Hooker in the third round. They did. And they told him, look, this is not a reflection on you, but we've got a value pick here. And if we've got a fill our pipeline and have somebody to back you up. It was, it was definitely a value pick. I mean, I, I don't know what Hendon Hooker is going to be. He's 25 years old coming into the league. He's only two years younger than Jared Goff. Like they're pretty close to the same age. And I don't, Goff's not being replaced. Everybody's no. saying Hendon Hooker's the next starting quarterback. Oh. He's going to start. Goff is a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Like period. You're not replacing Goff. He keeps getting such a bad rap. And, and that guy, does nothing but win football games. He took them to the Super Bowl. He took a team to the Super Bowl. Yeah. They didn't win. But, and, and for those of you who are watching going, he's not a top 10 quarterback. Yeah, he really is. I mean, if you look at it, you've got Mahomes. Well, let's, got, let's look through this. I'm going to name you half yeah. quarterbacks here, and you tell me who is okay. ahead of Jared Goff. You have Lamar Jackson. He's ahead of Jared Goff. Mm, I think that's a coin flip, but yeah, I, He's got some skills golf doesn't have. Josh Allen. Ahead of him. Joe Burrow. Ahead. Deshaun Watson. That we don't know yet. Russell Wilson. Don't know yet. 
I mean, if it's based on his history, yes, he's better. Um, We're just based. This is 2023 starting quarterback going in 2023. Wilson has a lot to prove. I'd take off over Wilson right now. You have C.J. Stroud. I'm not including the rookie quarterbacks, Anthony Richardson. Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is better. Patrick Mahomes. Obviously. Jimmy Garoppolo? No. Okay, Justin Herbert? Yes, he's better. Tua Tagovailoa? No. No. When, I don't know if he can stay healthy. Mac Jones? No. no. Aaron Rodgers? Yes. Kenny Pickett? No. Give me Jared Goff all day on that one. Uh, Ryan Tannehill? Nope. Desmond Ritter for the Falcons? Kyler Murray? Definitely not. Bryce Young? We don't know. Justin Fields? No. As of right now, I don't think so. Dak Prescott? No. Give me Goff all day. Jordan Love? We don't know. I hope so. Yeah, but take him golf. Kirk Cousins? No. Oh, no. Give me golf all day. He can win a big game. All right. Matthew Stafford? I wouldn't say so based off of him no. being hurt. Not anymore. Derek Carr? Definitely not. Daniel Jones? No. Jalen Hurts? Jalen Hurts is better. I'd rather have Much Jalen Hurts on my team. Brock Purdy, Trey Lance? Brock Purdy's hurt. Otherwise, I would say yes. Geno Smith? I wouldn't no. say yes, even if Purdy was healthy. Goff's got a better arm. He's got better pocket presence. I don't think we were watching the same NFL last year, but I don't know if he can throw again. You have Geno Smith, no. no. Baker Mayfield, no. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, no. no. So what you're saying at that point then is Jared Goff, on my list, is number nine. On your list, ten. Well, and let's put it this way. He is by far the better, in my mind, the best quarterback in the NFC North. Yeah. Not even close. I, I'll take him over Kirk Cousins all day long. Yeah. Ah. But he can move up and down this list depending on how people perform. But coming into 2023, I mean, he's a starting quarterback in this league. You have a lot of Lions fans wanting to replace him, and I just don't understand it. I don't understand it either. And, you know, getting back to the love thing a little bit, he had a lot of leverage that I don't think he played out. Because... Nope. Really, what do the Packers have to back him up? Uh, some kid from Penn State they drafted in the fifth round. Exactly. I rest my case. They don't have anybody. I would. I hope the Packers are going to go out and get some kind of veteran backup. They, If they're going to do it, they'll do it late in training camp. I mean, you're not going to take reps away from no. Love and, and the kid from Penn State, and you have Danny Etling on the team as well. You want them to get as much reps as possible. So they're not signing anybody until at least... Look, Jordan Love is going to get 99.9% of yeah, the reps. As he should. As he should. And I hope he does well. But by signing a $13 million one-year extension instead of holding out for the uh, fifth-year option, you're not showing yourself a lot of confidence. Well, this is what pisses me off more than anything. You have the Green Bay Packers. You just said... Our future is Jordan Love. We are trading Aaron Rodgers, and then you don't sign him to his fifth-year option. Correct. Your response should have been, this is going to be cheap for us. We're going to sign you to, to your fifth-year option. But instead, you do this negotiation BS where you end up just getting him for $13 million, which shows that you have no faith in Jordan Love. And Jordan Love clearly has no faith in himself, as you said, because he signed the contract. Right. It's not so a good situation. why did the Packers trade Aaron Rodgers? Because you're basically saying, I have a philosophy on this first round pick thing. Because the Packers were very stern on, I want a first round pick next year. Next year. Because if you're really bad as a Packers organization, you can now leverage those two first round picks to trade up and get a quarterback. Well, and they which may, I think is what's going to happen. And I may have to do that. I mean, Christian Gonzalez was sitting there at 13. That's your pick if you're the Packers. Yeah. They needed the backfield help. And New England got the steal of the draft. Him. I agree. It it was an interesting draft. But I, I brought something up. I sent it over to you right before this, the show started. Yes. Because this draft, nobody knows what's going to happen. And we won't know for three years. So let's go back in time. Get into our way back machine. For those the of year you Jordan Love was drafted. Yes. That's Mr. Peabody and Sherman, way back machine. I can't believe you don't remember that. Bullwinkle, you watch Bullwinkle because I bought them all for you. 
Anyways, who's Bowinkle? The Moose. <laughs> <laughs> let's look at 2020 draft. And let's just see how people are doing for the first few picks. I mean, the Bengals are doing pretty good. Bengals are doing pretty good. They got Joe Burrow. Number two was Chase Young. He's been hurt. They did. Washington did decline his fifth year option. Right. But I think that's the owner just being an ass. Well, he's right up there. He's got. I'm selling this team, so I'm going to make sure I don't give right. this kid a fifth year option. Uh, you had Jeff. Jeff Akuda. For the Lions, he's been up and down. Lions right. fans aren't a big fan of him, I don't think, but I, I think he's a pretty good player. Giants drafted Andrew Thomas. I mean, he's been fine. And then we get into Tua Tagovailoa, Justin Herbert, back-to-back. -back. Herbert it's, is obviously doing well. Here's the interesting thing. Let's go down to 12 real quick. The Raiders had 12, and the Raiders had 19. Both out of the league. Out of the league. Henry Ruggs the third. At 12, obviously, most people know what happened to him. For those of you that don't, he's a moron and killed people in a car accident. Yes. Um, Damon Arnett had a lot of off-the-field issues and character issues. He's, he's been cut and is out of the league at this point. And the steal of the draft, the winner of the draft, take out the quarterbacks. But the winner of the draft would be the Vikings with Justin Jefferson. Yeah, well, the, the, the Vikings have both those back-to-back -back first round picks now with Jalen Rieger, who is not the player no. that the Eagles thought they were getting, and Justin Jefferson. I mean, and Jefferson, it's, it's Devontae Adams and Justin Jefferson for the best wide receiver in football. Yeah, 100%. Brandon Ayuk is doing really well, which is who I still think the Packers traded up to take, and instead got Jordan Love. Um... You look at two other players in the first round. Uh, Isaiah Wilson is no longer with. He's a free agent. Right. Tennessee Titans cut him uh, and hasn't been in the league. Wasn't in the league last year. Is not in the league now. And you have Jeff Gladney, who is another Minnesota draft pick. And unfortunately, he was he was killed in a car accident. Right. That doesn't really count. Clyde edwards alaire was a really good running back, but really isn't playing that much anymore. You just don't know. You had DeAndre Swift, who was. The Lions, second Doug round pick. Back. They just second round him. pick. Michael Pittman Jr. for Indianapolis has been a stud in the second round. T. Higgins was the first pick in the second round. God, did the Bengals get lucky with this draft? Wow! But they didn't get an offensive line. No, and that's they didn't. where they're they hurting. Didn't. Cam Akers was a second round pick for the L.A. Rams. He's done really well. A.J. Dillon was a second round pick for the Green Bay Packers. Still available. So you you sent me this, and I don't know what your point was for this. I mean, this is fun to go through, but what's your point? My point is that this is a draft. This is when you rate drafts, and Minnesota clearly had a great draft. Any of those that took the quarterback, it was a great quarterback class, have done well. Tua, we don't know about because of the injury, but you just don't know. And a lot of these guys that were taken, and everybody was bragging about in the first and second round of this draft, yeah, are going to be out of football. Yeah, four first round picks out of football from the from twenty twenty. Um, two of them cut. One did something terrible, and the other one passed away. I heard something that was very true, and I don't know who said it on draft night, but they said the ones that succeed and really do well are the ones that look at draft night as just the beginning and not the end. I think that ha I think that's a Henry Luggs the third and Damon Arnett the two Vegas draft round picks. Yeah. Um, they clearly thought it as I, I did it. Yeah, I made it. I've got my money and let's go. And really the ones that really shine are like the JJ Watts or the Joe Thomases who didn't even show up for the draft. And they're just like, yeah, fine. I'm drafted. Now I'll come back and I'll prove it. And they become hall of famers. The work just begins. Right. So I, I just thought it was interesting. So take a look back in time at the draft from that. Year. I mean, looking at the quarterback class, Jordan Love has a lot to live up to. I don't think it's possible. I mean, he'd have to be. He's not going to be Joe Burrow. But even you look at somebody like Tua, who's who's been hurt, right? But when he's there, he shines. Yes, he does. I mean, there's no quarterback on this list, especially not in the top 10, that wasn't worth the pick. No, Jason Her Justin Herbert was absolutely worth the pick. I mean, it's... 
But those guys were certified first round yeah. picks. The issue with Jordan Love is a lot of people had him as a third, third round, round rating. Pick. Yeah. Nobody can explain why the Packers. I think he's the next Hall of Famer. I said that last year more that. as a joke, but I do think that he has the chops to make it happen. But does he have the team? I don't know. I don't think he has the team support, and that's the hard the part. His head coach is saying, we need to temper expectations, which scares me. Your GM obviously doesn't said he wasn't going to give him the fifth-year option and then didn't and renegotiated for a fifth-year contract for whatever reason. And all those people are saying the Packer organization won. Packer organization looks petty. You didn't sign the guy who was supposed to replace Aaron Rodgers that you're so high on that you're convinced is the replacement for Aaron Rodgers. You, you didn't give him his fifth-year option. So is this is Goody doing this, and I'm being dead serious, to try to save his job because he can go and draft another quarterback next year and say, okay, this is my guy. This is the guy we got to go with. Yes. I think that now. I do. That's a... I think this is just petty. He it didn't is. like Aaron Rodgers when he came in, clearly. Aaron Rodgers didn't bow to him as the almighty GM, I think, the way that he wanted to. And, and he said, listen, you're not Ted. Why am I listening to you? Ted Thompson being the former GM of the Green Bay Packers. Goody is going to go back to back to back years letting Hall of Famers go. Correct. Devontae Adams, yep. Aaron Rodgers this year, and he's already come out and said that uh, David Bakhtiari will be gone after this year. How do you hold on to a job when you let those kind of players go in back to back to back years? The only one that makes any sense is David Bakhtiari because he's had those knee injuries sure. and that was a bad signing to begin with. And why didn't he trade? You always trade somebody a year before they come to the end of the rope. I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. None of this makes sense. You At least with Ted Thompson, his, his, his philosophy was draft and develop. He really didn't re-sign people to third contracts. He, he didn't believe in it. He believed he had his replacement on the bench. And it, you knew that going in. Right. Like, okay, here's your second contract. You're not going to be re-signed to this. I need to start getting to know these new guys because they're not going to be here. That's true. I don't know what Gutekunst's philosophy is because his guys are no longer on the team. Well, the problem is I don't think it's just Gutekunst. They've got that three-headed monster up there, and it makes the Packers the most dysfunctional franchise in all of sports. Mark Murphy's got, what, two years left? Through the summer 25. He can do a lot of damage in that time. He, he, all he cares about is getting the draft in Green Bay. And that's what he should worry about. Stay out of the personnel decisions. You're like the Roger Goodell of the Green Bay Packers. Bring money in. Hire good people around you. And I'm, I, I mean, he made the call on Matt Lafleur and said, "No, this is our guy." Not a, didn't even interview anybody else. Right. I don't think that was the right hire at this point. We'll find out this year. I, just I don't, don't think there it. was any issues between Rodgers and Love. I thought. LaFleur handled the Rodgers thing well at first. I think he still wants Rodgers. He does. Let's face it. He does. I, I mean, if you're a head coach of a team, you don't want to see a Hall of Fame quarterback go away. I think Mark Murphy's going to leave. and Somebody else can be brought in. And, and God forbid out. it's somebody from inside the organization. Uh, because what needs to happen now is somebody needs to come in and clean house and, and treat this like a winning organization. Well, they need to like go Bob back. Bob Harlan did. They need to go back to the Bob Harlan model, where he is the guy that runs the organization and does it very, very well. And Mark Murphy and was he, that for a long time. When Ted yeah. Thompson was there, that sure. was Mark Murphy because Ted had the juice. But now, the worst thing you did for the GM after Ted Thompson stepped down because he was very sick was hire somebody from within the organization. Should have went outside. And what should happen is that same thing again, where you have a coach. And you have a general manager. General manager is required to do the scouting and personnel and the head coach coaches. Right. And the guy at the top, the president of the Packers, essentially the owner of the Packers, stays the hell out of football. Yeah, but no owner does that. <laughs> Jerry Jones does. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure, sure, way, sure. Best story of draft night. Best story of draft night was Deuce. Can't remember his last name, but. I don't know his name. The son of one of the Dallas scouts. Front offer scouts. And he gets drafted. If anybody hasn't seen that on Twitter and we'll link yeah. we'll link to it. 
as a father pretty special moment it was one of the best moments i can ever remember where you get to call your kid and go so you want to come and work with me on monday i don't even know if i could have gotten it out i mean he barely was, did he barely did he and, barely did and the son was just like it was almost like dra- the movie draft day where you know the son follows in the father's footsteps yeah it was a, just a great moment and by the way joey porter jr congratulations following in his father's footsteps becoming a pittsburgh sealer for sports talk with dad this was a great it draft. was a great draft night I just, hey i think you and i have it out a lot of fun today so too. thank you so much as always for watching let us know what you think in the comments below and while you're down there like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we enjoy making it but you cannot have a conversation with your father without him getting the last word so That's it is all you the case, though. but in this case because well, I, has... I hang up you know yeah you but. do so <laughs> I don't know if anybody's noticed during the show, but I've got a new bobblehead. Yes. Do you know what the importance of this bobblehead is? Only because you told me after you bought that bobblehead. April 15th, 1976. Chicago Cubs versus the Los Angeles Dodgers. Two complete tools jump out of the stands and go out on the, into the right center field area and start pouring gasoline on an American flag. Rick Monday sees that, goes over, swipes the flag, to prevent it from being burned, Rick Mundy is a hero of baseball forever. Funniest part of the story was Tommy Lasorda was running out there because he was, I think, ex-Marine. He was going to kick their butts. But as he said, I was too fat to get there. <laughs> <laughs> but Rick Mundy should be, for, actually, that day should be celebrated every year because it was just such a great statement of, we're not burning this flag, not in this stadium, never. So congratulations to Rick Monday, one of my all-time favorite players. And that's why we have this new bobblehead. You know, that that is two really solid last words. I think this, I, I, I'm scared for what next week's going to be. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. This has been Sports Talk with Dad. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.